Hello and welcome to yet another video and in this video it is something very special because I'll be talking about this camera right here it's the Canon EOS R5 now this camera has been out since mid of 2020 but I've really only bought it since mid of 2022 because it's when I decided to actually convert from like fully commit to mirrorless cameras from DSLRs like the 5D Mark III, 5D Mark IV, the 1DXs, things like that. So yeah, but this camera has been through so many projects. It has been through so many weather conditions, through so many places and you know, it's it never really let me down. It's been my favorite camera alongside my EOS R6 and the original EOS R. And in this video, just like all of the other my thought videos on different cameras, it's not an in-depth review it's just purely a my thought video based on how I shoot with this camera based on how I use it based on how I put it through its paces on different shooting conditions things like that so yeah in case it actually might help some of you out so yeah without further ado let's get into the video So the Canon EOS R5, now when it first came out, I've never experienced such camera, actually apart from the 6D Mark II, I've never actually experienced or actually read a lot of both good things and bad things about the camera in the same time because as much as people love the autofocusing system, the dynamic range, the image quality, the frames per second, the accuracy within the autofocusing system, things like that, there were also just as much hate towards the overheating problem, mainly the overheating problem actually. And since then, Canon actually has released so many firmware updates to the Canon EOS R5. And to be honest, it's been kind of like nice to see all the different incremental upgrades. And overall, it actually feels like a completely different camera apart from the same sensor as when it first released because the autofocusing system, for example, it got much better, much more improved and it's more sticky and more sensitive as well. And the overheating problem problem has well it is still there but it's been so much better so much more improved and it's just a great camera to use now that you can actually rely on and in this video just like all of my other my thought videos I'll be dividing into three different sections the first one is the ergonomics and the usability following by the image quality and the image quality I'll be dividing that into the photography side of things and the video side of things and then leading into the uh, conclusion so let's first start with the usability and the ergonomics of this camera this camera feels very solid in the hand and i really love the grip design especially simply because even though this camera is pretty much light and small albeit a little bit thicker and fatter than the original r classic but it has a very nice solid feeling to it that you know after working with it for a long period of time your wrist actually don't really hurt or don't really um have as much pain as let's say with my a7 IV that's filming me right now where the grip is kind of smaller and it's a bit edgier whereas this one is really nicely rounded and it just fits your hand really nicely and it doesn't force your hand to actually be in one kind of position you can actually still move your finger around and you know still feels very comfortable in hands to use and as you can actually see from most of my photo shoot videos Videos, most of my setup for with the R5 tend to be with the um, 28 to 17 millimeter at f2 and outside the photo shoot videos when I go for um, conference shoot or wedding shoot or let's see event photography things like that I still do pair this uh, camera with the 28 to 17 millimeter f2 and obviously if you're holding it for like let's say two or three hours straight with the weight usually um, the wrist starts to ache a little bit but with this grip it's just a really nice grip to hold and it takes a very long time for you to start feeling that ache or sometimes you don't even feel the ache because of how comfortable the grip is obviously that there is some subjectivity to it as well because it's just pretty much based on how my hands feel feels around this grip but otherwise the rest of the body it feels all very solid it has a very nice light profile to it as well and um, despite my stickers on here the actual size of the camera makes people not really consider it too serious so I can still bring it to do some basic street photography some basic candid portraits on the street things like that and people won't really mind you know that much because Back in the DSLR days when I was using, let's say, the 1DX, people would definitely notice that camera. But with this camera, yeah, it's just a very nice and small profile camera like a mirrorless camera should. Panasonic, your cameras are way too big. Anyway, <laughs> moving on to, you know, the button layout and everything. It's all pretty much at your fingertips. The only complaints I have about the buttons is that they're a little bit too small if you live here in Northern Europe, especially during 
middle middle of uh, winter when there's like snowstorm and everything and you're wearing thick gloves some of the buttons can be you know a bit too flush out that you don't really feel that confirmation that you actually press on some of the buttons but of course um, they're actually nicely spaced out as well so when you do press a button you're not going to be accidentally pressing another button so that's nice it's just that I wish each individual buttons were a little bit bigger and has a little bit more of a travel to it so that in winter when you do work with really thick gloves you can actually feel the um, confirmation of the buttons that you're actually pressing so yeah there's that but otherwise all the buttons are really nicely laid out it's really in a logical way and most of the buttons you actually use from let's say the 5d mark three days so you're not going to be spending a lot of time getting used to it and even if you're new to Canon system it's all all very logically laid out whether it's the um, AF on button or the AF button and I really love having the rate button when I switched from the 5d mark 3 5d mark 4 over to, to the original EOS R there wasn't any rate button like a physical one that you can actually rate and that frustrated me so much because after a portrait shoot I just wanted to rate certain images right away that you know when I get home I can actually see the ratings on my editing program that I can just you know go through those images first edit those images first and then send them over to my model or my clients things like that whereas you know with this camera it saves a lot of time in the field with the rate button and everything and of course it actually works as a mic button as well if you want to record a voice memo per images so if you're doing photojournalism or if you're doing some portrait photography or even photography where there's like a photograph that you really want to save um, with some sort of um, story or captions you can actually record your voice it will save the sound or the audio file in the exact same name as the uh, photo that you were capturing or um, captioning if that's a word or just yeah storytelling or giving yourself a note to that particular image so that's actually very nice and it's also very nice to see it in this semi-professional level camera and not only in you know the 1DX and all the other professional uh, camera series like the uh, R3 for example but anyway moving on to the back uh, there's this really nice um, screen which is slightly bigger than the screen you'd find on the R6. This is something I really don't understand. The R6 is much more expensive than the original R, um, even when you know the R8 wasn't out. But yeah, the original R still has bigger screen than the R6. And um, the R5 also has bigger screen than the R6. So yeah, that being said, it's not really noticeable. Once you're out there in the field, both the R6 and the R5 screens worked really nicely and you will not notice the size difference. You will, what you'll notice is actually how sharp it is, how detailed it is, and how good it is in bright light condition. Unless if you're shooting in places like Thailand or some other tropical countries where during a midday, sunny light um you might still have to shield the lens sorry the screen itself so yeah just keep that in mind otherwise in normal daylight condition here in northern europe it's very nice screen to work with the refresh rate is great the color accuracy is great the exposure accuracy is also great without having to boost the um brightness of the screen so that's quite nice so yeah overall i really love how it feels how it handles and also just the overall representation of the images you get with the screen is also nice Another point to like about the screen is actually the um, touch screen itself because the touch screen on here is actually quite nice. It's a uh, capacitive touch screen and it's so user friendly and in the same time I kind of like find this joystick useless because a lot of times when I'm actually composing images through the viewfinder I usually use my finger to also just kind of control the um, autofocusing points and of course when looking through the images and zooming in I don't need the joystick to quickly scroll around anymore I can just use my finger and everything as well as going through the menu I don't need the joystick to you know go around anymore I can also just tap on each individual menu on the screen so that's actually quite nice Obviously, if you're working under cold environment and you prefer having your gloves on, then the joystick does become kind of handy, so you don't need to, you know, take off your gloves just to um, control the screen itself. So, there's that. That being said, um, you guys already know this if you watched my EOS R video, that I much prefer the touch bar behind the um, Canon EOS R um, over the uh, actual 
joystick itself because the implementation on the screen is very nice that I just don't see the use for the um, joystick that often. That being said, it's only pretty much based on how I use this camera. And moving on to the next point, which is to the side of the camera where you have the media storage. It's a dual card slot, one um, CF Express Type B, which is my favorite, and the other one is SD card. Those who have watched my videos so many times will know that I hate SD cards with all my heart. I think it's the most unreliable um, media storage solution, things like that. But that's just pretty much based on my experience of how many times SD cards have corrupted, re regardless of brands, regardless of class and everything. So yeah, I'm just using the SCF Express as my main media storage card. Moving on to the bottom of the camera, as usual, there is this really nice LPE6NH battery. And it's actually very powerful, very strong when doing photography. I think like through different firmware updates, um, they also became much more efficient in terms of power management because I definitely noticed the difference, you know, when the camera first came out back in 2020, when I loaned the camera and I would shoot with the R5 here and there and the battery life wasn't really that good. It was just enough to get me through like a day and then that's it. But uh, with the battery life here, like I can go through different shoots in a matter of like three, four days and like with just one battery. Or maybe, maybe it's just me getting used to, you know, how the battery functions and everything and subconsciously just being able to know when to turn off and when to turn on the camera and when to use the camera to maximize the battery life. I'm not sure which of the factor it is, but I think over the period of time, Canon has definitely improved the efficiency, maybe through firmware, like improved the effic efficiency of the um, battery itself. <laughs> so, yeah, and now moving on to the other side of the camera where most of the ports are hidden um, behind these flaps. These flaps are actually very, very thin and even though in, in the beginning I worried about like how how long it would last, but in the same time after, you know, going through so many weather conditions with this camera, I'm actually confident to say that these flaps actually do a very good job of actually environmentally sealing uh, this these ports as well. So yeah, it's actually quite nice. And I also love how they compartmentalize, well, organize all of these flaps as well. For example, your sound system or sound ports, like your headphone and your mic, is under one flap rather than like two different flaps, which is good. I also love how the um, remote port is right in front of the camera. I feel like that's a very natural place to put it and I love this remote anyway so yeah it's actually very nicely designed and uh, yeah now moving on to the top of the camera where I would like to actually um, say something that I don't really like which is this mode dial I really hate how there is this mode dial I just wish that you know it follows the either the R6 or the DSLR age where the mode dial would actually be on this side of the camera and still retaining the screen actually because with this mode dial you have to press mode and then um, scroll through different modes and it's just not really as quick as let's say having a physical mode dial on top of the uh, camera like the R6 here has so you see how fast you can actually switch through uh, different modes on the R6 and that's actually quite nice whereas with the uh, US R5 it's just mode and then you know you're scrolling through it can feel fast if you're used to it but in the same time it's not as convenient so yeah there is that and another point is actually the LCD viewfinder now this viewfinder is actually a very nice viewfinder the refresh rate is actually really nice and even if you're working under low light condition you will still be able to frame your shots really nicely and the refresh rate is still there it's not really lagging it's not really sluggish you know compared to the optical viewfinder the electronic viewfinder will always have some sort of lag to it because it still has to transfer that um, signal or that um, <laughs> Uh, transmission between the sensor and the um, LCD itself so yeah but with the R5 it's it's pretty good like I've shot concerts with this camera and it actually works very well and now moving on to the software side of things this camera actually whew, is still a very nicely organized camera like menu system wise and Canon has always been known for you know having the very organized menu system very efficiently laid out everything is logically named and it's so true with this camera because even compared to my a7 IV this camera is able to you know compartmentalize different menu settings different um, feature settings under 
the more logically named menus and it's just something that saves you a lot of time and it allows you to learn the menu system much quicker and access the menu system much quicker to get to the uh, settings that you actually want to get to and that is something that's very good about this camera and even though it packed so much more features than let's say um, the EOS R but I am able to access the menu system in here as fast as the EOS R which actually says a lot to the actual menu design of this particular camera and also with the touch screen it just makes it much faster to access different part of the menu system as well whether you're actually in the menu page or if you're just accessing the quick menu on the uh, live view screen so yeah it's really something to appreciate and this camera actually is able to also shoot well have the uh, flash sync speed of 250th of a second which is also quite nice and impressive for the class of the camera and you know most cameras within this class will be able to shoot around 200th of a second flash sync speed or below like 160th of a second or 180th of a second so having 250th of a second flash sync speed on this camera is also very welcome feature to have so yeah obviously nowadays it doesn't matter to me as, as much but I definitely notice it because back in high school I used to use a lot of strobes and flashes so having 250th of a second flash sync speed would have been very very nice back then when I was still using the 5D Mark II and the 5D Mark III so yeah but otherwise yeah the menu software system is very great and also if you want to update the firmware it's also very nice and quick as well and if you want to customize your own menu you actually have the option to do that so you know if you want to customize your favorite menu to always access all of the um, frequently accessed menu settings really quickly you can always customize that on the star menu um, although I don't really go to the star menu that often because I already memorized pretty much where the settings that I want to um, go to and also just navigate there really really quickly. Uh, this camera is a very fast camera not only in terms of like how you can operate it but also in terms of firing power so you can actually shoot up to 12 frames per second mechanically and 20 frames per second electronically and um, I have to confess with you that I rarely use electronic shutter because I am still pro mechanical shutter and you know this camera has a very nice shutter sound it's very soft it's very dampened and let me actually just show you guys Yeah, so if you're actually, you know, shooting in a conference or in like some sort of meetings or in some sort of quiet places, like quiet ceremonies, um, certain wedding scenes where you need to be really quiet, you know, then you don't need the actual electronic shutter because barely anyone will be annoyed of this shutter sound. It's very dampened. And also because it's dampened and soft, it does give you another benefit because this camera has 45 megapixels. Every single movement, every single shakiness will be emphasized. So having such a nice and soft shutter actually helps you to actually capture a much more stable shot as well. So yeah, it's, it's actually quite nice. And also on the other hand, I like mechanical shutter because there's that physical feedback I get from the camera rather than digital um, sound when actually shooting um, electronic shutter so yeah there is that so I really love that about this camera and now moving on to the next point which is the onboard preamp I find that the onboard preamp is actually very nice because even though it's not the cleanest um, preamp in the world but it has a very nice mixture of like having a, a very clean audio yet not too clean that it sounds very clinic like so yeah it's a very nice balance there and if you want to do some sort of quick interview for your corporate um, work or anything you can actually use the onboard or preamp just trust it without using the external recorder although if you have it I would also recommend that as well but if you want to save yourself some time you know just by having the mic hook up to the onboard preamp here it will still do a pretty good job of recording very nice and clean audio file anyway so yeah that's pretty good and it actually saves your like it will save you a lot of time as well and now moving on to the next feature which is actually one of my favorite features as well it's the Wi-Fi feature or the Bluetooth as well I mainly just use Wi-Fi and with Wi-Fi you can actually tether shoot with this camera so it can actually set up this camera leave it somewhere and then wirelessly wirelessly control this camera um, from elsewhere so let's say if I just want to photograph seagulls outside my balcony I can just set up the Wi-Fi in here and then just run off somewhere and then just you know um, lay food well actually lay food in front of the camera first and then run off somewhere so that the seagull will actually 
come to the camera, well, to the food in front of the camera, and then I can just fire the um, shots with the uh, camera. And I can also actually just transfer files from the camera uh, quite quickly as well. So what you'll find that the wireless transfer of this camera is actually quite fast as well. So if you're shooting, let's say for a client and you only have one hour and after that you have to actually move somewhere really quickly, um, you still have the time to actually transfer all the images or, or at least all the selected images or the good images onto your phone and then from your phone you can actually just distribute it to your clients or to other people who maybe you can concern about it, things like that. So yeah, you can actually have a lot of flexibility when it comes to your workflow with this camera so that your clients or your audience will be able to see some sample images right away before the final um, product gets delivered. Or if you're doing wedding shoots, you know, you can actually share some of the pictures right away with your uh, client and they can actually share some of those moments right away um, while still being at the ceremony. So you don't have to wait until you're home and then edit the images and then, you know, your clients We'll get it the next day or the next two days that'll be completely a different feeling to it so it's always nice to just share that moment soon after it was taken so yeah Whew. now moving on to the next point which is the um, AF points the AF points in this camera well the AF system rather it's actually very accurate and as I mentioned earlier in the um, video about the firmware updates the AF system in this camera is so good. The tracking is so good. Of course, there were times when systems like Sony system would be able to detect the subject before this camera does. But what Canon has on the upper hand is when it does track the subject, like when it does detect it, which is pretty much a split hair second after the uh, Sony does, it is much able to track those subjects, especially when they're human walking or running around in the field or especially when they're subjects like cars and birds. It's just so much better on this camera than it is on cameras like the uh, A7 Mark IV that's filming me right now, actually. So yeah, that is something that's very nice. And also the low light sensitivity with the AF is also much better than the Sony system as well, what I find, because it's actually much more accurate. Yes, the Sony would be able to still detect those subjects before the Canon system does, especially in low light, but the Canon system would be much more accurate at focusing on those subjects and also track those subjects in low light. And it is also the same story when shooting at like an overly exposed scenario as well. Whew, so yeah. <laughs> And also with the subjects that has a lot of complex contrast patterns, the Canon EOS system, well the Canon EOS R5 and the R6 in general, will be able to detect and focus on those subjects much better than the Sony system because on the Sony system, when the subject has a lot of complex contrast areas, um, the AF will start losing it and maybe focus slightly here or slightly there. Whereas with the Canon system, it is still able to actually recognize the subject and actually lock onto it very sticky and actually very accurately as well. So yeah, that's pretty good. And now over onto my last point, which is the build quality. The build quality of this camera is actually very nice. It's magnesium alloy and it is much better weather sealed than the R6. Now I've taken both the R6, the R and the R5 through so many situations like rainstorm, dust storms, heat waves, and so many other um, settings. It even like got soaked with uh, seawater while shooting on some of my photo shoot videos, and it still survived both the camera and the lens, both the R5 and the R6. So yeah, it, it really just goes to show on how solid these cameras are really built, and also with it being magnesium alloy, not posh plastic like the R6, it makes it a much, much more durable camera to actually take to so many places with you. Now, of course, I have it covered with this protective sticker, which is only pretty much a sticker layer. So if it drops, it still doesn't have any absorbance to it, if that's even a word. Um, but yeah, but these stickers are really mainly to be here so that I don't scratch them as easily as, let's say, how easy I scratch my 5D Mark III, 5D Mark IV, my 1DX, and so on and so forth. It has been dropped before, and it still is shooting. I'm a bit ashamed of the uh, drop part, but yeah, it's proven to be a very nice and solid camera to use. And the weather sealing has also been improved compared to the R6 because now this R5 has the 5D Mark IV's level of weather sealing according to Canon, and that's actually pretty good because 5D Mark IV has very, very good weather sealing. So yeah, there's no complaint to this really. And also when I was out shooting in the rain, sometimes during a rainstorm, there is some sort of um, 
mist inside the uh, EOS R when that camera is actually fully weather sealed, but it, it actually didn't really damage the system. But like it was just a little bit of mist underneath the um, the actual LCD viewfinder here. But with the EOS R5 and the R6, there wasn't any mist at all. It was still running perfectly fine. So. Yeah, that's what I really like about this camera as well. But of course, within the EOS R's defense, um, it was during the time when um, it was spring and there was like really harsh cold weather from the rain. And also after the rain, um, there would be like this really high heat from the sun. So it was like switching between the two type of temperature. And obviously with a lot of cameras, there would be like a little bit of fog or a little bit of mist within the um, viewfinder anyway, whether it was the well weather sealed DSLR or well weather sealed mirrorless camera or EOS R, there would be a high chance of this fog or mist building up within the LCD viewfinder anyway. So yeah, but at least it didn't really damage the system by any means. But I'm just saying that this is so tight and also the EOS R is, sorry, the R6 is also tight that there wasn't any fog or mist that builds up within here. And also the LCD viewfinder itself is actually quite nice and big. So over a long period of time of looking through the um, viewfinder here, your eyes would still be very comfortable looking through it. So that's actually very nice as well. Whew, that's a lot of talk for a viewfinder. <laughs> And now over to the image quality. Well, the image quality of this camera is actually pretty great. You've seen so many image samples out of this camera already through so many of my photo shoot videos. And even outside my photo shoot videos, this camera has always been delivering great results, whether it's in the um, professional environment or just kind of like home travel, like trip, things like that, or just photographing friends and families and basic concerts or even like professional paid concerts, things like that. This camera has always been a great camera that never really let me down and the image quality has always proven to be really nice but if I have to criticize one thing it would actually be the um, the noise well the low light performance obviously being 45 megapixel and also a semi-professional camera you can't expect it to be like super clean when working with ISO over ISO 4000 which sometimes you have to in certain concert scenarios of course because in some concert scenarios things just get way too dim and you know for the experience and everything but of course it's just became extra complicated if you're for if you're the photographer shooting that concert but yeah naturally i wouldn't really use over iso 3200 for paid work and i wouldn't use over iso 4000 for personal work so yeah but even at iso 4000 the grain is actually very nice and there's some sort of character to it that i really like and talking about the character the color science the color um reproduction the color depth out of this camera is actually very nice there's that um, very nice Canon character to it as well. I really love the color science out of this camera so, 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 so much, especially how it renders skin tones and everything. Of course, just as I said in pretty much most of my videos, my favorite Canon color science is still from the original 1DX. I find that I haven't found any Canon cameras that would be able to beat that Canon color, color science, but you know, this is actually not far behind either. That being said, this camera has a much better dynamic range than that camera, of course, and the sensor is a much better sensor that produces much more detail per pixels and also just, you know, a much more pleasing overall kind of um, rendition to this sensor as well. So that's actually really nice. And the files you're actually getting out of this camera is actually quite robust. So there was a time when I accidentally shot my paid work completely in JPEG. And even the JPEGs out of the camera is actually very nicely rendered. And also, well, to be expected because it's a Canon, but also it was able to be manipulated later in Lightroom and Photoshop really nicely and the files actually hold up actually quite nicely as well. So God forbid if one day you actually forgot to switch from JPEG back to RAW after shooting like a small project that only needed JPEG images, then yeah, you would still be able to manipulate and actually work with those JPEG images quite well as well. So that's actually quite nice out of this camera. The Moraine aliasing control out of this camera is also very good. There is an AA filter in here, but it's a very subtle one. So it's not a very strong AA filter that would damage or 
take away the sharpness out of your images too much. It's a very, very, very subtle one that's enough to you know, eliminate a lot of the moraine aliasing. And on top of that, the sensor does a very good job of the readout that you don't really get a lot of moraine aliasing out of this sensor anyway. So that's actually pretty good. But yeah, otherwise there isn't really a lot of negative things I can really say about the sensor. It's just very good. It's very standard, nice sensor. There's more than enough resolution in here to just do your crops. And also, yeah, the color reproduction is just so great, especially uh, when you're actually switching between different complex skin tones. This camera actually does a very nice job of actually rendering the different complex skin tones, colors, things like that. And it's just does it very smoothly, very nicely, yet retaining a lot of details as well. So I would really highly recommend this camera if you're shooting portraits, but also if you're shooting like cityscape, landscapes, and also to a certain extent event photography because um, it is able to really keep up with that movement, with that um, lighting, with that rendition, with that color rep reproduction and everything. So yeah, overall, the color science out of this camera is very good. And now over onto the video side of things. Well, this camera, to be honest, I haven't really shot videos with this camera, believe it or not, simply because I mainly use the R6. I love the R6 video quality more because the um, 4K is much sharper than the 4K of this camera, unless if you go for 4K HQ, where this camera would be actually much sharper. Um, even though I haven't really experienced any overheating with this camera yet, um, it has been a very great uh, video camera when I actually need it to. Although I've actually never shot anything professional with this camera, but I've actually used my friend's R5 to photograph, sorry, to record an entire three hour concert with her R5. And to be honest, the sharpness and everything was actually quite nice. And the color reproduction was also there and it's also very smooth, very nice, just like the typical Canon color science. And because it was just a standard recording of a concert, you didn't really need to actually color grade and straight off the camera, the files just look so good already. and. Obviously the color science, the skin tones and everything looked so good already that you don't really need to actually do a lot of color grading with. That being said, if you do need to do a lot of color grading with this camera, there is the um, enough bit rate within the file that you can actually do it. And if the neutral profile is not flat enough, there is the normal Canon C-Log and also the C-Log 3 as well within this camera. So that's actually quite good. And if you want to record 8K, which I've only really have done three or four times just to test the 8K, that's all. Um, the files are just so nice, especially in the 8K RAW, you can actually do so much as you can actually do with a normal RAW file of the uh, images. So yeah, it's, it's so good. It really is so good and the IBIS works really well. The IBIS in this camera actually for both photography and video works really nicely. It's very strong, it's very stable. The only downside with it, which Canon kind of addressed in one of the firmware updates already and improved it ever so slightly, is when you're actually working with ultra wide angle lenses. So when you do work with ultra wide angle lenses, because the IBIS is so strong, it actually introduces a little bit of like wobbly effect on the corners and that can actually be a little bit unpleasant when you're shooting especially like videos within ultra wide angle, let's say the 11 to 24 millimeter lens or the uh, 15 to 35 millimeter f2.8 lens. So yeah, with those lenses, you will be able to see some of the um, wobbly effect especially in video but in photography it actually works wonders you can actually um, use like slow shutter speed and just to get that motion blur a little bit when people are walking and you know you would still end up with a really sharp overall results of the image of what you were framing so yeah it's, it's really nice to have that ibis Whew. Um, but otherwise, the moray, the aliasing control on this camera is actually quite nice. You don't really see it, it's well controlled. Um, the contrast control for both photography and uh, filmmaking part is also very nice as well with this camera. I really love the contrast out of it. And also the color reproduction and the color depth is also very good in video mode of this camera. So pretty much no complaints really. The only other complaint I have about this camera would actually be the time limit in video mode, uh, regardless of the video settings. That's actually why I started investing more into the Sony system because for my online tutorial classes, I actually need a camera to always record as long as there's battery life in the camera or there's enough 
card capacity in there. So yeah, with this camera, there is the time limit, unfortunately. But with the R6 Mark II, obviously that just came out and I wish it actually would came out like last year or something before I bought the A7 IV. Um, because that, like, that camera doesn't have the uh, time limit of video recording at the uh, settings that I needed to record. But anyway, back to the R5. Yeah, overall, if you can get past the um, the overheating. So if you don't shoot a lot of 8K and if you don't shoot a lot of 4K HQ, especially in like a sitting video like this where I would need at least an hour to fully record everything because then I can just select which part I can cut out if it's getting too long or which part I can actually cut out because I was coughing or anything like that, then yeah, this camera isn't really for you because you, know, you have to wait a certain amount of time when um, shooting video especially 4K HQ and above extensively with this camera for over a long period of time. Whew. So yeah, there's that for video mode. And now into the conclusion. Well, to conclude, this camera is a very good camera to use. It's very reliable. It's, you know, it's a camera that you can actually take it through so many places and it actually will always deliver good results. If it doesn't deliver good results, then it's pretty much on the user, I'm afraid to tell you that. But, you know, it is such a great camera that produces great color signs. The skin tone is good. The color reproduction is good. It's good at rendering all of the different complex content contrast, different complex skin tones, which is very hard by the way, and different complex details as well. The detail reproduction both in photography and video is very nice. Having such a fast uh, and accurate autofocusing system that actually couples with the uh, fast frame rate of this camera is also really nice and a welcoming feature as well. The um, silent shutter wall, the very soft dampened shutter albeit very fast as well, is also a very nice feature to have because not only that you're getting that feedback of the camera that you're actually taking picture, but you're actually taking picture that um, sometimes, actually in all of the cases that I've tried, the subject didn't even know that I actually took pictures, especially during, let's say, street photography. So that's actually very handy and that's actually pretty good as well. So yeah, it's a very fast, very reliable, very nice camera to use. Obviously the downside is the um, the time limit in video and also that overheating. If it's really bad for you, then it's not really a camera for you. But for me, because when I do record videos, it tend to be like, at least with this camera, it tend to be like this kind of video where I'm actually sitting in front of the camera. And for that, the camera was able to actually handle things quite well. Or another case would be just record, you know, little short sequence here, little short snippets there, things like that. In that case, the camera will also be able to just handle the situation quite well as well. The IBIS works great apart from using ultra wide angle lenses like the 11 to 24 or the uh, 15 to 35. But otherwise, if you're careful with those um, lenses and use them properly with the IBIS system, you can actually come back with really nice and smooth images or smooth um, videos as well. But yeah, otherwise, I wouldn't really say a lot of bad things about this camera apart from the things that I've already mentioned in the video. It is such a nice and solid camera and you know it's the one that you can actually hit the burglar in the head with if a burglar ever shows up of course and of course uh, you will feel sorry for the burglar's head and not for the camera. And uh, yeah another downside of course as mentioned earlier is this modal it's very slow to operate and things like that but otherwise it's a very nice camera the one that you can actually customize a lot of buttons to do and program a lot of things that you wish it to do as well. So even though there's none like not a lot of the uh, specific customized buttons or custom function buttons things like that you can still re function or reprogram most of these buttons up here to actually or actually also in the rear as well to do pretty much what you want it to do. The only thing I wish this camera has, which the 5D Mark III has, is a touch um, pad on the wheel. Maybe it does and I don't know, but on the Mark III I really like how you can actually just tap the back wheel to adjust your brightness and also your um, recording volume, like the audio recording volume. So yeah, that was actually very neat and very nice as well. And that is something I've been missing from this camera. Well, actually on the R6 rather, because I record more videos on the R6 than I do with the R5. Since for me, this is mainly a photography first camera for what I use it for at least. Whew. So yeah, um, before this video gets 
much longer than it is already now. I hope you can actually gain something from this video. If you have any questions, any suggestions, any stories to share, feel free to actually leave them down in the comment section below. I will get through all of them as soon as I can, I promise. And if you need a free photography guidebook, it's absolutely for free on my website. No need to submit your email address, nothing. Just click and download and I will not bombard you with any newsletter nonsense. Um, it's on my website. The link is down in the description section below as well. Just click and download. Otherwise, I thank you all very much for watching. Salute to all of you who actually watched it this long. Um, thank you all very much for watching. Stay safe. Have fun shooting. Till next time. Stay safe. Thank you all. Thank you all very much for watching. Stay safe. Have fun shooting. Till next time. Bye for now.